One of the great writers, really great writers of the Reagan administration and of today, over at the American Spectator, is Jeffrey Lord, who is out of the conservative movement, who has the pulse of the conservative movement, and he wrote a fairly long expose of Ron Paul and his supporters. And he says, these aren't conservatives, these are neoliberals, particularly given their foreign policy and some of their other odd views. Jeffrey Lord, how are you, my friend? I'm just great, my great friend. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing doing very well. Now, you've been attacked in the comment section. This is the way <laughs> it works. By, by hundreds and hundreds of uh, Ron Paul supporters. But in truth, they represent a very small, small percentage of the... I don't even want to call it conservative of whatever it is, is it, uh, don't they? Right. I mean, this is sort of a half-man, half-horse kind of... Uh, political doctrine that they invent as they go along. I mean, it's phony baloney. They don't even believe it. When when you follow the logic of what they're trying to do, they don't even believe it themselves, number one. But the, the serious thing, the thing that bothers me here is this is not really a campaign for president. This is a campaign to, as it were, create an alternate reality for America that simply is, I, I have to say, bizarre. It's bizarre, and I specifically said in there, going back and looking, I think that it has uh, real anti-Semitic tendencies. Uh, I think they don't like conservatives. Uh, I found uh, an instance where where uh, Mr. Uh, Congressman Paul was out campaigning for the Libertarian Party presidential nomination in 1988, and he was going around saying that Ronald Reagan was no conservative. Well, so, you know, Ronald Reagan yesterday and the rest of us today um, – this is what they do, and it's it's decided there there is a a, a real serious threat of of out and out leftism here, both in their philosophy and their tactics. And don't they, don't they don't they partner with like Code Pink and other things? Wasn't this part oh, of the sure, strategy sure. developed developed by some of his key supporters, like his former chief of staff Lou Rockwell? That's right, that's right. And and you know you go you you go read this stuff. I mean, I frankly I was astonished when I read this stuff. And, and this is the kind of thing that I remember, that I'm old enough to remember from all these left-wingers, the SDS, and all of this kind of thing, in the 1960s. I mean, this is, this is exactly what this stuff is, except now they're trying to say suddenly that this is, this is all conservative stuff. Well, there's no Bill Buckley here. There's no Ronald Reagan here. I mean, this is, this is crazy. Uh, absolutely. Now, let, let me stuff. let's let's dig in on some of this now. Yeah. Uh, uh, for instance. Uh, He's got a blogger. His name's Jack Hunter. He used to call himself, or still does, the Southern Avenger, right. which by itself is harmless, but I think he means it because <laughs> here's a guy who trashes and says he hates Abraham Lincoln. Why does he hate Abraham Lincoln so? Well, he, he calls him he calls him a tyrant, and one of the things he trashes him for is the suspension of habeas corpus. Now, you you can you can have that that argument, but what I find very interesting here is. Uh, Jefferson Davis did precisely the, the same thing. We don't hear a peep out of this from the Southern Adventure. Um, Abraham, uh, Jefferson Davis, his own vice president, was so upset that, that uh, Jefferson Davis was doing the same thing as Lincoln that he more or less split off from the guy and never, never you know, spoke to him again. So there, there's a great deal of hypocrisy here and an insistence that Lincoln is a tyrant. They want to rewrite American history in this fashion. You know, I have, uh, not to plug a book here, but I have in front of me your father's book, which has all these fabulous pictures. It's a, it's a uh, illustrated interpretation of the Gettysburg Address. I was looking through it here tonight, and it's quite stunning in terms of the match of photographs that were taken on the Gettysfield, uh, Gettysburg battlefield, which is about 30 miles from where I am at this moment. And it's truly stunning when you match the words of the Gettysburg Address to these photos and the horror that went on there. And to say that, that Abraham Lincoln is a, is a tyrant when all of these people have, uh, you know, been out there trying to uh, save the Union, uh, save the United States, save the Constitution, it's just, I, I, I mean, it's just, it's despicable. I, let I me mean, ask you a question. Um, let me ask you this. I, I get the sense that these guys are secessionists. In other words, they, the reason they really hate Lincoln is because the North won and settled the question of secession, and they believe that states should be able to secede. They do, they do believe that. And as a matter of fact, they've specifically taken Justice Scalia, who answered this question for somebody uh, on the record, and they have taken him to task for saying that states can't secede. 
And the question I would have for them, and this is why I say this is phony baloney stuff, well, if states can secede, why not cities? Why not townships? I mean, where does this, where does this stop? George Washington addressed this very firmly when he dealt with the Whiskey Rebellion here in western Pennsylvania after he was president and said, you know, once you get people saying they're going to make the law, then as opposed to the constitutional way of making the law, then it's going to be the strongest guy who, who rules. And this is basically what they're advocating. What is this, I want to delve into this a little more, this association with these hard radical left groups like Code Pink, these anti-war types, I mean, it seems like they they have a joint message in that, but for America, uh, we wouldn't have these enemies. And you discuss some of the history of this, how wrong they are. Oh, you know, he tries to, he tries to imply that the founding fathers were, quote-unquote, non-interventionists. And, of course, I mean, this is simply, first of all, factually, not true. I mean, the founding fathers, you know, Jefferson went after the Barbary pirates, and and uh, Madison invaded Canada. George Washington, as a general, invaded Canada. To use Ron Paul's philosophy that if we're not there, we we will save America and we won't get into trouble, then you got to apply this across the board here. And they don't they don't want to do that. You know, they get they get very skittish when you go back and use these examples. And of course it's nonsense on stilt. I mean what what they're saying is to put in simple terms that if there's a bully in your neighborhood who's intimidating you from walking down the street, you're better to stay in your house than walking down the street. That you shouldn't have the freedom to walk down the street. And and then they try to imply uh, apply this internationally. This was George McGovern's uh campaign mm-hmm. platform in in 1972 and his his slogan was come home america this is exactly what ron paul is proposing and it has not whatever else it is it has nothing to do with conservatism not not a thing well now he and his advisors by his advisors i mean his advisors lou rockwell was his chief of staff and business partner and is still a huge supporter and activist for him he has his website you've got right. jack hunter the southern adventure who's now his chief blogger You've got the, uh, a radio guy who should be nameless because I don't want to give him the attention he wants, who's a mouthpiece for him but has a very small audience. He's got a whole cadre of these crackpots around him who have either individually or collectively trashed Ronald Reagan, Bill Buckley, Antonin Scalia, Sarah Palin, Ed Meese, even libertarians like the Cato Institute, the Koch brothers. They've attacked Clarence Thomas and Hannity. And uh, and Limbaugh, and so of course, who's me. left after all of that? I, I mean, don't know. I, Ron Paul, I guess. That's right. That's right. That's that is the whole point, is to, is to undermine the credibility of all of these people. Uh, I mean, it could be Lincoln today, Reagan tomorrow. It could be you. It could be Rush. It could be Sean. It could be Bill Buckley. That's what their objective is, because at the end of it all, then Ron Paul and his interpretation of this stuff is left standing, and that, frankly, is nonsense on stilts. Aren't they closer to neo-Confederates who endorse really more of the Articles of Confederation? Yes. Wouldn't yes, you say? Yes, they are. I, I, you know, I've been doing some reading here while I was waiting for your, your call here. And, and uh, he's very fond, Ron Paul is very fond of a, a guy by the name of Kevin Gutsman. And then also uh, Thomas uh, D. D. Lorenzo, I guess is the guy's name. And, uh, you know, they go on the, the premise that the... Uh, the Articles of Confederation, you know, are, are what we should have been looking for. And, you know, I, I have a question for them as a Pennsylvanian. This is my adopted home state, your home state. If, if, why do we have to accept the fact that Pennsylvania exists under their philosophy as it is? This, after all, was a grant from the King of England. Who's to say that Pennsylvania should exist the way it is? Now, we do this because of the Constitution and rules and order and all of this sort of thing. They want to take it down to the state level and stop there. Why can't we go beyond this? I mean, that would make them, according to their own definition, monarchists, I believe. This, this, is, a, a, this is a crucial point, and I want to underscore it with you. 